is that automotive defects is something that we can prevent. Uh, we need to understand. We need to understand what's going on in Malaysia. We need to understand why we have children with spina bifida in our country. We need especially we need to understand our diet we also need uh, people in um, you know in in the legal uh, uh, avenues who are able to to not just advocate uh, people for uh, you know people with neurotic defects but we also want to uh, have data-driven policies for Malaysia. Data-driven policies that everything that we do is based on evidence. And this is the reason why I, I have recruited uh, the best uh, among Malaysians, uh, among surgeons, clinicians, uh, engineers, health economists, uh, lawyers, because we need to push the agenda further. Um, we need to understand, we need to prevent, and the children that we already have with neurotic defects, we need to better their lives. Because with early intervention, we can minimize disability. When we minimize disability, we save costs. And this is a long-term cost because people with uh, spina bifida, for example, they live a normal, healthy lifespan. And this is why it's extremely important uh, to further advocate for this group of people, because they can not only contribute uh, economically, but also uh, in regards to um, having, you know, the right access uh, to medical health care that can further, uh, you know, improve uh, their condition and therefore help them contribute to Malaysia. I also want to touch a bit about the things that I do in the lab uh, to this end. Uh, I'm a scientist, uh, and so I, I look at uh, embryonic development. Uh, I've spoken at length uh, in the earlier slides, but the other interesting thing that we can do in the lab, and you can see this is a live embryo. Uh, it's actually moving. You can see the, the heart beating. We can culture these live mouse embryos in the laboratory, and we can test them against a multitude of different uh, uh, substances uh, in order to find what affects uh, in a first trimester uh, pregnancies. We have to sample this live. Okay. Hi, I'm back live again. Now, the last five slides, I, I'm going to do it um, as is because I, I really want to stress uh, the importance of understanding uh, the Malaysian diet and what it is that could be going on. I mean, mind you, these are unpublished data as of yet, okay? Uh, I take my science very, very seriously. It's also extremely difficult to do good science when it's so difficult to get funding, research funding, all right? Um, very uh, popular or sexy, like HIV research, for example. It's really difficult to get money, and so, I, the main reason why I agreed to uh, Suzaino's uh, suggestion that I do this uh, for the advocates of scientific uh, literacy is mainly so that the Malaysian public pushes this to see this is not just an agenda that affects a, you know, a few people or the few unfortunate people, or the few unfortunate okay you, this is entirely not the case. The case that I'm trying to fight for here is that the womb of the Malaysian woman is at risk. That means your daughters, your granddaughters, you know, could be at risk because they were not educated fully. They were not given all the right tools in order to protect themselves when they become sexually active. And we start with the most simplest of things. And this is the, our diet, okay? We have a diet rich in coconut oil, rich in uh, palm oil, and we know nothing about what it does to the uh, developing fetus, all right? So it was very interesting because when I first started this project, you know, many, many years ago, it was because one of my students was extremely interested in black seed oil or, or more popularly known as habatu sauda. Okay, 
I, uh, on the other hand, I wasn't very keen because, well, Habatu Sauda is not a Malaysian derived oil. Uh, and I really truly didn't know how many people in Malaysia actually took Habatu Sauda. And I actually, and I also didn't like the, the, the kind of uh, experimentation that was done at that time. I didn't like uh, the wound healing experiments done by certain academicians, which I consider not academic at all, uh, because you harm the animal instead of, you know, extrapolating good scientific data. Okay. So my point here is that, and I really 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 want to test that uh, you know impress upon all of you when i i'm 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 an animal lover uh, i served on the uh, animal ethics and use of animals when you know for for some time when i uh, you know early during my early days in um of course i'm so vocal not many people like me but that doesn't matter the point is the science has to move on all right so what i'm trying to say here is that okay it, it alarms me because i have done this for like eight years or even more than eight years I think and we see the same thing we see the same thing whereby we find that uh, when we feed coconut oil to the uh, mother mouse yeah the mother mouse has been fed even when she was a virgin right she was fed a month uh, earlier before uh, she was uh, mated with the male mouse yeah uh, and again you know the, the 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 diet continued and we do not force yeah we do not force our animals to eat them we we saturate the pellets uh, with the oil and they eat them willingly and we know that they're eating it because we change it regularly uh, we, we monitor the birth weight we monitor the amount of food that has been consumed and we can see uh, this is uh, data which is uh, which can be repeated you know again and again we see the same thing those fed coconut oil and black i'm sorry coconut oil and red palm olein which is the best form of palm oil uh, have a somewhat uh, delayed closure of the spinal neural tube. Okay, why this is, I don't know. But what we do see in, um, you know, in retro, well, not in retrospect, but what we do see as a comparison is the stark uh, difference when we compare that to the black seed oil embryos. Um, how do I go to the next one? Ah, okay, sorry. Next slide. Good to have minions around, yeah? Uh, all right. So look closely at this figure. Okay, this is unpublished, mind you, but I'm sharing it because I want the Malaysian people to push, you know, for the agenda that we need funding. We need funding to understand the Malaysian diet. You, you look at this figure clearly, yeah? The only one that has a close uh, uh, neural tube is the black seed oil, the BSO. All right, where do I get the pointer? Okay, well, the pointer, I know it. No pointer? We can see the arrow. I can see You can arrow. see the arrow, okay, great. I can see the arrow. Okay, great. So you see, this is the black seed oil one. You see, the black seed oil one is completely closed. Every single time it's completely closed. But of course, you know, then it's like, oh my God, uh, uh, is black seed oil turning my embryos into monsters? You know, uh, do they have this special quality where they do even more because they're, they're, they're closing, the neural tube is closing successfully uh, before even the control is closing. And you can see that the control is actually comparative to the olive oil. So olive oil, I think, in my opinion, based on my scientific data from my laboratory, I would say this is the best cooking oil that you can use, all right? If you want to get pregnant, I would highly suggest that you stay away from coconut oil and palm oil, okay? I don't care what the politicians say, all right? Uh, I only care about my scientific data and, and, and it alarms me because this one hasn't, hasn't developed as well as the controls, sorry. Okay, this hasn't developed as well as the controls. I mean, the olive oil one has a little bit of bending here. This one also has a little bit of bending in the control, uh, but this one is rather premature. I mean, the data is not significant. The data is significant, however, for the black seed oil achieving closure earlier, okay? That is my job as a scientist, to educate, my people, my countrymen, as well as I need to do it, you know, publish, 
the global population will be uh, judge and jury. But this is what I see. All right, and not many people are doing this kind of studies, especially on diet, which is specific to the Malaysian people. Okay, so, hi, oh dear God. Um, I mean, it makes me emotional. It makes me emotional because, because I have tried to, you know, channel, I tried to make many different people to try to be interested in this and to fund this further. And it's, and it's been a struggle, all right? And so, uh, I mean, I, I, I really dislike the fact that universities seem to be more keen uh, to, to have intellectual property of the, uh, of the breakdown of, you know, these oils than they are in getting the message across. You see, so, so these are my concerns. And apart from uh, food and diet and what we put in the mouth, the other thing that we put in the mouth, right? Okay, I'm going to skip this. The other thing that we do is medicine. All the different kind of common medicines that we put in our mouth, antibiotics especially. Malaysian doctors like to prescribe antibiotics. Is this a good idea? All right, again, you know, my team have published uh, work done on trimethoprim, all right? And this is where I really, really want to show you guys, you know, what a danger trimethoprim is because it is a folic acid antagonist, all right? So I want to talk about this paper that we had uh, published, all right? Uh, this mum was given uh, trimethoprim for four months. She's a married woman and she's prescribed trimethoprim. Uh, and, and to make it worse, I mean, please do look into this paper, all right? So the clinic, a private clinic had named it, you know, something, something else all different altogether. But so we tested, the, we tested the item. We tested the item and we find that the wrongly named drug was actually trimethoprim. And then when I, when I tested it on my mouse, they all had open cranial neural tube defects. All right. So I need to protect the, you know, I can't talk too much because this had become a, a court case. It was settled out of court. Uh, and and just I just wanted to show uh, this to you guys, you see. So this was the this is what the baby was born with, this huge cyst. All right. Okay. Because the mother is an educated mom. And so she took folic acid. So she was also taking uh, an antibiotic. Which, you know, she did, was taking a drug. She didn't even know it was an antibiotic. She wasn't told it was an antibiotic. She wasn't fully informed, right? And 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 this this is what happened. So at the same time, she was taking medicine that destroyed the folic acid, and she was also taking folic acid because she knows she's pregnant. Uh, and only after she got pregnant uh, did the clinic uh, tell her to stop taking the medicine. You know, even though she had declared right from the very, very beginning that she's a married woman. All right. So, uh, again, this is what I want to show. It's not just uh, antibiotics, but also anti-seizure medication, for example. This is Dilantin. Dilantin is an anti-seizure medication. It's well established. Yeah, it's well established that uh, in, mater in maternal health, that women should not be taking anti-seizure medications like, like Dilantin, for example, Penitoin, for example, valproic acid, for example, if they want to get pregnant. But there's nothing, that, there's no data there on the men. All right. So this is actually, uh, you know, embryos that were not derived from uh, female mice that were given uh, this anti seizure medication. It was actually data driven from the male mouse that was mated, that was given uh, this anti seizure medication and mated with the females, normal females or normal diet. All right. So again, like, do we, there is just not enough data out there. Uh, but what I do see in my lab, it's, it's, uh, it's rather frightening. <laughs> okay. uh, this is naproxen. Naproxen is another very common uh, 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 painkiller. It's a pain, pain medication. Not just naproxen. Uh, all right. Uh, paracetamol as well. Okay. So, but even then, you know, I need to do the data. I need to do more work. Uh, you know, I have to publish this work. Um, I'm, I'm far more confident uh, of my oil data. I'm far more confident. I mean, we've already published the trimethoprim data. Uh, I'm far more confident about my dilantin on male mice. 
uh, but I, I I need more money in order so for me to do uh, you know other studies on paracetamol as well as um, naproxen for example you know there's so many things there's so many things that Malaysian women are taking but we don't know Malaysian Malaysian men included as well you know uh, because because we do not see you know neural tube defects we do not see uh, one mother with a spina bifida child having another spina bifida child we don't okay so it's very wrong for doctors to say oh you shouldn't get pregnant again uh, you already have a child with a birth defect, you get pregnant. That's completely wrong. Not in the case of spina bifida, because most spina bifida in Malaysia are non-syndromic neural tube defects. Uh, I only see one case in one family. I do, however, see twins. All right. But twins in this case, is, you know, they, they, they come from the same egg. And so that makes sense, you know. Uh, you know, they were in the womb at the same time. That makes sense, all right? But we do not see the same mother having consecutive neural tube defects births, all right? So this is relevant, okay? So this is just to show the, um, some, some medical students. I mean, I'm, I'm quite confident with the, with the male mouse taking Dilantin uh, and having, you know, rather odd-looking uh, brain structure. So, so these are all abnormal brain structure, right? Yeah? The one in A, this is the only one with the normal brain structure. This obviously shows an open, open cranial neural tube. Okay. Um, again, you know, I also showed you just now the difference between spina bifida aperta, which is the open version, and spina bifida occulta, uh, the closed version. We built this mouse in Malaysia. We, we built the first ever spina bifida occulta mouse arising from failure of primary neurulation, yeah? Uh, two different genes, uh, both mice knocked out, we crossed them together, we got a spina bifida model arising from primary neurulation, uh, completely, you know, uh, you know, negating the idea that spina bifida occulta, a closed version of spina bifida, uh, does not have neurological deficits. They do have neurological deficits. Neurological deficits is depending on how high the lesion or where the neural tube doesn't close. Okay, so again, you know, I don't have enough money. I can't test what my mouse responds to, whether it's folic acid, whether it's inositol, whether it's formate, whether it's habatu sauda. I need the money to do good science, all right? Okay, so uh, I'm hoping that the advocates of scientific literacy will push, you know, there is a push from the ground. I tell this to all my spina bifida mothers in Malaysia neural tube defects as well. You know, we should just march to parliament, you know, get the act together. You know, Akta OKU Dua Ribu Lapan, which is supposed to be amended, but if the politicians can't behave themselves in parliament, what the hell is going to happen? You know, we can't get anything done. Not just that, in order for folic acid to be fortified in the Malaysian diet, we need to amend we need to amend the Food Act of 1983. Again, it needs to be debated in Parliament. So these are all my concerns, you know. Uh, we are already in 2021. I'm already a very old woman. I'm 46. I would like to see some clear changes uh, to Malaysia, uh, which will prevent more children being born with a birth defect, uh, you know, that I was born with and that they should be um, rescued from further suffering. Uh, I hope my experience and my talk today uh, have, um, you know, um, explained somewhat, uh, you know, a certain length of, you know, why, why, why studies is extremely important. And, and you can see that even in the mouse, which I built, the, 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 the mouse model with the closed version, I mean, this is, this is a skin covering, you know, it's very similar to what we saw in the child. Again, if I can't test uh, my mice with a different diet, I won't know what might rescue uh, this particular model that I have built. Okay, so again, uh, I would like to say thanks, really. You know, my students, as Zaino has mentioned just now, they are the strength uh, and they are the walls and the, uh, they're everything to me, really. Uh, my students past and present. Also, because I think I, I have the world's 
best PhD supervisor in the whole world. So Professor Andy Cobb, and this is Professor Nick Green. Uh, Nick Green was in, in UM in 2015. And, and you can see from my face here that I, I wasn't uh, practicing good diet way back in 2015. I, I look really tired and exhausted. And look at me now, this was in 2019, post GE14. Uh, and I was there with the leading neurosurgeon of PPUM, leading neurosurgeon of HKL, leading neurosurgeon of uh, PPUKM, as well as the clinical geneticist of University of Malaya, advocating, fighting. We are always fighting all the time for our patients, you know. So I hope that this talk can somewhat push, you know, this very important message uh, mainstream that this is something that all of us needs to be concerned about. Okay, with that, I thank you for having the patience to listen to me. Uh, and, and please do ask if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. That was really interesting. I never heard of this before, actually. Uh, but yeah, this is quite scary uh, to know that our diets, our local diets, we're not even doing somebody else's diet. Yeah? It's our local diets it, that could be the cause of it all. Uh, yeah, um, doctors will open the floor for questions. Anyone? Um, maybe I can get rid of this screen, then we can see. Uh... Oh, okay, do you want to get rid of this? Stop share, is yeah. it? Yeah, the stop okay, share. Stop share, all right. Okay. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Got I've, any? I've got a question about, you know, one of the things that you mentioned earlier was inositol. And previously, I just used inositol when I culture bacteria. So, <laughs> so I'm really, really surprised to know that it's in our diet. I mean, like I know it's in the cell, but you know, it's kind of a peripheral biochemistry thing. But yeah, the fact that, it, yeah, so the fact that it's actually part of our diet and apparently when I looked it up just now, we even have supplements yeah, for inositol. So my question would be because inositol is usually from, you know, food that is high in fiber from legumes vegetables, certain fruits, is it also because, you know, most of us don't get enough um, dietary fiber and that's one of the leading reasons why we are lacking in inositol and that's why, you know, I mean, like you ask most people, you offer them a cheesecake versus fruits. Yeah. Which one would they pick? Well, you know, so Zaino, I mean, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I, I was a PhD student in Nick Green's lab, like, you know, in 2003, 2004, 2005. And I used to like, oh, whatever, inositol, yeah, whatever. Because at that time, it was only known that, you know, is this inositol is a metabolite uh, that, can you sample the charger? Okay, uh, it's, it's a metabolite. And then people with obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, they prescribed inositol. Uh, so that you know the well and 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 I re I remember my my uh, I, I was such a miserable PhD student I must have been and my supervisor said why why don't you take inositol and come to the uh, come to to the light you know like or like Obi Wan Kenobi uh, <laughs> anyways uh, <laughs> yeah I was seen you know veering towards the dark side anyways I I I didn't think much of inositol back then. But I do have a completely different of, uh, opinion of inositol now, uh, because you know, uh, with aging, you know, with better data out there, etc., uh, I've I've started taking inositol supplements myself. And interestingly, I found that it actually controls my blood sugar level; it actually regulates it quite well. Uh, and so I don't know. Uh, I do know that I look much better now than I did five years ago, six years ago. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a whole host of things, really. Uh, and I think that uh, we, you know, going back to my message today, uh, we are at a disadvantage if we do not push for basic research on the understanding of the Malaysian diet. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not even asking that my lab be given the money. You don't trust me, you don't like me, give it to somebody else, but get it done. You know, you want to criticize me on the science or whatever, go ahead, but get it done. You know, I am sick and tired of seeing so many children. I get phone calls. 
um, uh, you know, because I'm so popular on social media now, whether it's for good or for bad, I, I get calls every other week. I get calls from all different states in Malaysia, uh, mums and dads uh, asking for help. Uh, and so we want to know why this happens. We can't do that if I cannot reach every single family and get their stories. You see, it requires money. But money is not in the terms of, I don't like the idea of what NGOs are doing. NGOs to me, you know, apart from perhaps, you know, Mofung's NGO, I, I don't trust the other NGOs. I, I truly do not, especially the ones which are specific to the prevent, uh, to, to, to spina bifida. I don't, I don't trust them at all because uh, even up till now, they have not engaged with Putrajaya. Uh, Borang OKU still does not have a box to tick for spina bifida. Uh, and most spina bifida children, when they are born, especially the occulta type, they look completely normal. But it doesn't mean that they do not have a serious medical condition. If they do not get the intervention on time, if they do not get their card OKU on time, uh, and you know, they will have the, their parents will end up having to pay thousands, even from the very beginning. And that also, if the parents are uh, educated enough to truly understand uh, the child's difficulties. Okay, sorry, I think I've, I've answered that too long. A any more questions? Sorry, chat. Yeah. Okay. Nowadays, actually, crowdfunding is actually more popular. I don't have any much hope for our politicians, especially the ones we have now. Yeah. It's going to be almost <laughs> impossible to do anything. But I have seen people being able to raise um, maybe, maybe 50,000, 60,000 around the amount just from yeah. uh, crowdfunding. So uh, I don't yeah. know whether that's enough. Because I don't know what the quanta is. For well, your, well your, yeah, I mean, I mean, crowdfunding is great because I do not believe in NGO. I do not believe in a money laundering scheme of Malaysian NGOs. Therefore, whenever any one of my children need, uh, you know, any, any help, uh, I, I, I crowdfund. You know, we, you can do crowdfund silently and quietly, and you can help people silently and quietly. But scientific data still needs to be published. So I thought it was really interesting that among the comments here that Pepper has mentioned here, I noticed Dr. Norasha puts a name last and the students in front of the papers. Well, this is the real practice, Pepper. You always put the person who does the work as first author and the boss, the idea, comes from the last author. This is international standard. Norasha Maidin goes by international standard, not by whatever fake Kangkong academician do in our IPTAs, okay? <laughs> yeah. So I take great pride in my work and who I am. Anyone who spent less than five minutes with me will know that I am, yes, as Suzaino puts it, what ganas or garang nak mampus? I am ganas and garang nak mampus. But the point is that I look after my work. I look after my work. I look after my students, my support staff, and I look after my patient group. And that is why the Malaysian government paid for my education abroad at University College London in the best possible lab, understanding neural tube closure. That is all I've ever wanted to do, understand neural tube closure, help my fellow Malaysians so they don't get the condition that I have because it is devastating. A birth defect and disability is a devastating thing to go through in life. So why aren't my Malaysian public helping me, understanding, push all these ridiculous bodo bodo academicians out of the picture? We need to do real work. We need to have, you know, data that will translate and help the rakyat. <laughs> I don't know lah. Our new mini our science minister pun dah sekarang Dr. Adam Baba. So what hope do you have lah? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit 
Yeah, everybody knows what where, where everything is, and it's kind of very frustrating. In in my opinion, right? I think as you, we just cannot stop speaking up. If anything, the five minutes that Pakatan Harapan has given us is it changed uh, the mindset of Malaysians. Malaysians are now a lot more vocal. I didn't have a social media presence presence post. 3rd of May 2018. That was six days before we went for GE14 uh, Pilihan Raya. All right, so six days before I went to the PPR in, uh, in Pantai Dalam and uh, Dr. Ma Dr. M was, uh, you know, touted to give a talk and I went. It was on my birthday. It was actually on my 40th birthday, I think. And, uh, and I went. And I went because I wanted to hear what he has to say because I knew what I wanted to say. And what I said was, Dr. M, bloody well, better win this bloody elections and get rid of the bloody GST. That's what I said. You can find it on Malaysia Kini. You can Google my name on it. All right? I didn't see any senator of disability going up and saying, get rid of the bloody GST because it is making life miserable for all the orang kurang upaya in Malaysia. They didn't. So where are their principles? All right. So we need a government where the servants of the people, i.e. the people running the government are the servants of the people, and they must be people with principles. Not bodo bodo, not bodo bodo. Time for bodo bodo is over, okay? We have too many people to help. We need people who are engaged in and committed to reforms. And I'm never going to speak, stop speaking up. Because at the end of the day, if I speak up, you know, when I die, you know, God will ask me, Aisha, what did you do with this huge brain that I had given you, that I beque bequeathed upon you? So it's okay if, it's, you know, uh, I, uh, getting promoted, etc. Is, you know, comes by very difficult for me. That's fine. That's fine if, uh, uh, you know, if I'm not uh, acknowledged. I do know that when, uh, when I present uh, at any international uh, global platform, people know me. Online, social media, people know me. Because irrespective of whatever the bodo bodo that goes on, I still publish my work, even if it takes 10 10 years to get it done or more than 10 years to get it done. Eventually, it will get out because I'm confident. I treat my students like they are my own uh, children. And, and, and I think if everyone in Malaysia did that, if everyone in Malaysia felt so very passionate about this, and I'm always saying this to my friends, I say like, if you able-bodied people cannot get your act together, when, when are the others in Malaysia going to have a chance? When are the others in Malaysia going to have a chance to breathe, to have a life? And, and, so, and so, yeah, I am savage. I am savage because I want the Malaysian right yet to be protected and to be realistic, all right? This affects your daughters, your grandchildren, your granddaughters, all right? The future of Malaysia does not just begin when they enter standard one in school. It begins in their mommy's womb. All right. So they need the best, you know, day one of conception in their mother's womb. Uh, so so I, I think I, I've taken a lot of, uh, you know, your, your time. A any other questions? Or I can go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, that was really, really interesting, including the last part where you take part the government. <laughs> I like, yeah. I like of the, I like. Do, do we know? Do we know the the budget? The last, oh, I think Maidin, the last government passed their budget. What was there any allocations there? Did, was it? Did it go down or did it go up? All Just I generally know, I know. All I know, I mean, in regards, I mean, let's talk specifics. All I know was that. Fortification of the one kilogram packs, we call it as a one kilogram uh, tepung gandum, right? Uh -huh. it's supposed to have begun on the 1st of July 2021. Uh -huh. But again, you know, uh, is this legal when we haven't debated this in parliament? 
Mm. So that's actually a specific there, there issue is so we can look many, at. La. There is so many legal aspects that we are just, you know, uh, main, main taro je. I, 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 you know, I, I, it makes me mad and emotional when I think about it. But even then, you know, it wasn't debated. Like, does it make sense for us to just be looking at one kilogram packs of tepung gandum. I mean, is it because we are assuming that Malaysians semua makan uh, burger, roti burger, ada, ada tepung atau, you know, cakes kind of thing. When we know that most Malaysians eat beras, ma uh, sorry, makan nasi, you know. So uh, why are we not looking? Why not investing on how we can fortify folic acid into our beras, for example? You know, in a way that, yeah, so all these things requires basic science. Why do you send people abroad? Why do you, I mean, why do you send people abroad to learn, to study? You know, if not to benefit the Malaysian rakyat when they come back home. Instead, when they come back home with their PhDs, they just become spokesperson for the idiotic politician. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I better end this now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, thank Doctor. You so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. much. Stick around if you want to hear. We've got a paleontologist uh, speaking. Uh, I, I saw. The, those are all great talks. I'm definitely going to look at them. Uh, okay. But I, I am now off to attend my nephew's birthday. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Great, thank great. You.